Hello, I'm Max Lechner. And he's a professional pool player. And in this video, we're going to show you how this guy is preparing for his big tournaments. Watch out. Hello Max, it's a pleasure that we two meet each other again and that you show me a little bit and show us a little bit how your training regime works. Tell me a little bit, how was your last tournament and what are the next tournaments on your schedule? Yeah, hi Norbert. First of all, thanks for having me again on your pocketed uh, pool billiard channel. I'm feeling great at the moment, having a little uh, break off. And uh, yeah, my last tournament was uh, the Euro Tour in Sankt Johan. I was performing quite good, was really happy with my game and my mental side of the game as well. Um, unfortunately, I lost in the round of the last 32, but I was really, really happy. And uh, yeah, can't wait uh, to compete in Fulda at the, the Matchroom European Open. I'm a huge admirer of your stroke technique and I'm so curious to learn who taught you to play like this and who helped you to achieve this really perfect uh, stroke technique. Well, thanks. First of all, um, all started like uh, 22 years ago when uh, uh, the former president of the club, Bernhard Kasera, asked me if I would uh, like to, to join the club and have a little bit of a practice uh, together with him. And yeah, since then, he is on my side as my, my coach, my friend, of course, and uh, my manager. And um, he teaches me all he knows, and uh, he is always uh, willing to learn something new. Uh, doesn't matter if it's the mental part or the technical part. And uh, yeah, since 22 years, we, we work together as a team. We all know you from your awesome results, especially in the United States. People here in Austria and in Europe know you anyway, but the International Open against Jason Shaw, where you just lost barely in the final. Uh, how would it feel to you if you would have won, won this tournament? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, always a great memory. Uh, in 2019, Norfolk uh, was a great tournament. I was uh, enjoying myself a lot over there and uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. And uh, the final with Jason, I think I uh, was just a little bit too nervous and uh, was too nerve wracking for me. But uh, yeah, it was a, a great achievement and uh, yeah, I hope I'll be in the final uh, one day again. Okay, and now uh, I really appreciate that you spend your time with me and that you show us a little bit how you practice. So let's stop talking and let's get on the table. Let's go. Once again, warm welcome in this video. Max, show me how do you start, how do you usually start a practice session? Before I even hit the ball, I'll do a quick, or not so quick, uh, warm-up. Having a little stretch, doing some exercises to activate my brain. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that lasts about, like I said, to 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. Once you finish your mental and your physical warm-up, is there an exercise you usually play all the time when you start a practice session? Or do you have different kinds of um, exercises you always start with? The start actually is always the same for me. Uh, most of you guys will probably laugh now. Uh, exercise that I always do on every practice session is to line up all the 16 balls on the head string. So as you can see here, I lined up all the 16 balls. You maybe laugh a little bit because this exercise is quite a beginner exercise. And, uh, but for me, it's very important. I always have an aim. Like for now, I have the, the goal to, uh, to focus on my pre-shot routine. I'm going to chalk my cue. Then I'm going to line up in the exact line of the nine ball to the corner pocket. I'm going down feel my stance a little bit, I have a few warm-up strokes 
and make the ball and go through the ball as much as I can. So maybe some of you guys may have recognized that I'll drop my elbow during the shot like this. For me that's the perfect technique because you can gain so much more power uh, with a bigger follow-through but uh, like I said there are many players not dropping the elbow playing world-class pool so everyone is individual and whatever works for you is the best. So as you could see, the exercise is pretty simple, but also very efficient because you can focus 100% on your aim. Like in my case, the pre-shot routine. So Max, since you mentioned uh, your pre-shot routine, like the first exercise totally makes sense to me mm -hmm. because you just warm up and try to feel your stroke. Exactly. Um, I got two questions. Why don't you use object balls and how does your pre-shot routine look like? So to the first question, why I'm not using object balls, it's pretty simple because if you use a cue ball and an object ball, your mind says always make the ball. And it's more important for your mind to make the ball than to focus on other things. So I'm using only object balls or only cue balls um, to really focus on what I want to achieve. So first of all, my pre-shoot routine looks like this. Here we have a nice layout in nine ball. First, I'm going to check out the situation. Then I finally make a decision. In this case, I will play a stop shot on the one to be perfect on the three ball. Then I will chalk my cue, standing line, put my heel on the center line, go down on the shot, have a couple of warm up strokes, make a pause, and go through. Max, why is it necessary to make a pause before you make a shot? For me it's necessary because I always double check the aiming point on the object ball. That's why I'm doing a pause. And in your opinion, does it have any effect on your technique if you make a pause or not? For me, not really. Thanks so much for the first uh, hints and for the first insights. So once your initial warm-up stroke routine is finished and you are happy with your pre-stroke routine, uh, what would be the things you need to work on right now or you feel you need to work on right now just to improve your game? Right now, for example, I'm working on so-called pressure situations. So I'm only allowed to move on to the next exercise as long as I am finishing the one that I'm doing. So these pressure situations you were talking right now, um, I also call them frustration drills. <laughs> Can you show us one? Of course. So for example, the first exercise would look like this. So the cue ball is placed on the second diamond in a straight line to the object ball, which is placed on the first diamond. I would try to make a perfect stop shot. So the first shot would be a perfect stop shot to pocket the three ball in the corner pocket and stop the cue ball exactly there. The second shot would be a follow shot, pocket both balls in the upper corner pocket. And the third shot would be a draw shot, make the three ball in the corner pocket and draw the cue ball back in this corner pocket. So now I'm going to show you what I was talking about. First exercise stop shot. Okay, we've seen the stop shots, they work out very well, but why do you play the stop shots so soft? Um, in my opinion, the better the technique, the more easy it is to pocket a ball. Because if you hit it a little bit uh, fat or a little bit thin, it may rattle into the pocket, in the pocket, and it won't go down. So the softer you can play a, a stop shot, for example, the, more, the, the, the higher the percentage the ball will drop. So once the stop shot exercise works out perfectly, you put yourself under pressure in trying to get both balls into the corner pocket, correct? Yes. Can you show it to us? I'll try. So 
So the photo shot worked out perfectly and you put yourself under pressure in the way that you try to do it like twice or three or four or five times in a row, correct? Exactly. I start with a stop shot. If I make a perfect stop shot, I continue with the follow shot. And only if I, if I make a, a perfect follow shot, I'll have the draw shot next. If I fail, I'll start over with the stop shot again. Oh, that puts a lot of pressure on you. Sometimes. <laughs> Okay, can you show us the draw shot as well? Yes. That was awesome because I think the draw shot was also perfect. Could you do three, four or five of them in a row as well? Maybe. I hope uh, I don't have to, to put too much pressure on me to, to try it over and over again. But um, yeah, I try to be as consistent as possible, of course, and I think that's a perfect ex exercise for it. Thanks so much for the demonstration of your awesome stroke skills. So I'm personally, and maybe also the viewers out there, might struggle a little bit to understand how these technical orientated uh, exercises help you in a situation during a match, because you're not playing any like situations or drills or whatsoever. So how would they help you in a tournament situation? So unfortunately, it's not always like this, that the, the first try always works out uh, that well. And uh, sorry to interrupt you guys, he really did it on the first try, so follow up <laughs> and draw shot. I'm not, I'm not joking here. Actually, it can cause a, a lot of anger and frustration, uh, those drills. And uh, if you learn uh, during the practice to handle anger and frustration, it will definitely help you in the tournament. If you miss a ball, if you miss position or whatever, you'll stay calm and uh, yeah, the chances to, to uh, achieve your goals in the tournament uh, will, will increase. And uh, for a normal beginner, what would be your advice uh, a normal beginner or a medium average player should work on? Of course, it's very hard to say and hard to tell, like to give a general advice, but what would be your most important thing uh, every player should work on? In my opinion, it's all about the fundamentals. Um, if you're in pressure situations, even the pro players, they think about their fundamentals, their pre-shot routine. And um, so that would be my advice. Work hard, uh, work on your fundamentals, on your stance, on your technique, and uh, yeah. And last question I would have to you, uh, Max, is how often do you think it should be advised to practice? Of course, you're a pro, you can practice much more often than uh, the average Joe. But in general, like people have families, they have to mm -hmm. work a 40, 50 hour job or even more. So how much time do you think someone should invest in practicing? In my opinion, at least twice. Once doing drills and doing uh, technical stuff and once play. Enjoy the game, play. Not always do the technical stuff because it can frustrate you a lot sometimes, but also enjoy the game and try to learn, uh, try to, to uh, put the new things you learned on the table. Max, thanks so much for spending time with us, with Pocketed and with our YouTube channel. I really appreciate that you took your time. Folks out there, please follow Max on Instagram and follow his journey uh, in his next upcoming tournaments. And the next tournament will be? Uh, the European Open, the Metrum European Open in Fulda, Germany. Uh, so hopefully we'll see us there as well. You want to shout out to your sponsors as well? Yeah, of course. A big, big thanks and a big shout out to my, to my sponsors. Uh, Predator and uh, how tips also uh, my my car Jeska uh, and uh, the company Stasto. So thanks so much for watching and hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.